Good morning guys, Victor here. I'm with Good Karma Sport Fishing, Ryan. Hey guys. We are out of Tavernier Creek today. You guys have seen us fish with Ryan a bunch in the past. Wahoos, muttons, hopefully some big porgies today, a bunch of different species. Today's video is also sponsored by Magic Spoon, which you guys do not want to miss, so I'll catch you guys back out in the water in a little bit. If you guys like delicious food like me, you do not want to skip this part of the video. Earlier this year, I turned 30 and I made a promise to myself that I wanted to get in the best shape of my life. With that promise came choosing delicious and healthy foods that don't taste like crud. I found this company called Magic Spoon and they are changing the game when it comes to cereal. Growing up, I loved cereal, but I don't buy it anymore because it's usually full of junk. Magic Spoon cereals have flavors that are never boring, delicious and healthy, and it brings back that childlike nostalgia. This cereal has zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein. You guys know I'm serious about my protein intake and only four grams of net carbs in each serving. And lastly, it's only 140 calories per serving. Not to mention it's keto friendly, gluten free, grain free, soy free, and low carb. I absolutely love that there's so many different flavors to choose from. My two favorites have been the fruity and the cocoa. Eating healthy doesn't have to be boring, especially with foods like Magic Spoon. Click the link below to grab a variety pack and try it out today. And right now, Magic Spoon is hooking up my subscribers. Use code Landshark at checkout to save $5 off your order or go to magicspoon.com slash landshark. Big thank you once again to Magic Spoon for sponsoring today's video. And just so you guys know from the bottom of my heart, I would never promote something I truly didn't believe in. And the proof is the fact that all these cereal boxes are empty because I'm telling you, I've been munching this stuff for breakfast, lunch, and dessert. Now let's get back to fishing. So we're gonna be targeting uh, mutton snappers here this morning, uh, fishing some in, in the deeper water. Uh, this time of year, I like to use smaller pilchards rather than larger baits, especially when they're a little picky. So what I like to do is a little tiny hook, go right through the nostrils. I don't like to go through the jaw with the pilchards. I like to go through the nostril and I like to pin it just like that, okay? Yeah, the nice thing about this, super easy, really long leaders. I don't like the hand line. I've got a little bridle system here. And what I do is I'll just pinch that clip on there. I've got a, as you can see, got the old zip tie. Trying to hook fish in really deep water. We're in 300 feet, so you can imagine there's a lot of stretch, a lot of line. Just looking for like the faint, faintest little tap. Mutton's got a big mouth, so it shouldn't take much for him to eat it. My bait was getting a little bit nervous. Sometimes you can see your pilchard moving around down there, but. So we got three rods out, Alex fishing uh, squid. Ryan's filming, and uh, we got another pilchard over there. Gorgeous day. This is very rare for February to be this slicked out. Alec, you did it to him with the squid? Wow. How is it that we have live bait on this side and this guy's got squid on this side? And <laughs> Alex just doing Alex things. <laughs> Love me a nice pink snapper. <laughs> That's, That's a mutton. mutton. That's a good Woo! one. Oh, That's yeah. a keeper. Nice, Hold Alec. <laughs> Ryan's got a net. Oh, he didn't blow up at all, dude. No, dude. he fought the whole way that's up. That's crazy. That's a nice mutton. Yeah, that's a good Hell one. yeah. Boys were fishing live bait. All it took was a little dead bait. Nice squid action. Left the tentacles on there too, so it was wiggling. Ooh. A little <laughs> secret pro tip. All right, guys, hooked up on the pilcher. Yeah, buddy. Oh. Take some line, take some line. This is the first uh, fish we've hooked on a pilchard. Ryan was just getting a bite on the goggle. Look at that. It definitely helps with these bent butt rods in 300 feet of water. I like fighting fish like a man, but you know what? 300 feet of water, I don't mind putting it in the bent butt. So far, we've got one gorgeous mutton. And you guys saw how Alex fish was really orange. When they're out here in the deep, they take on a different color profile than when they're uh, in shallow. The shallow water ones will be a lot more um, kind of like green and pale and these ones are super orange and bright. Look at that. And I'm kind of babying them because we're fishing relatively small hooks because our hooks are just trying to match up to the, uh, the pilcher. I don't think I've eaten snapper once this year. I'm excited if we get one. I mean, if you're cooking, I'm there, dude. No, nah, tonight's sassafras. sassafras. Sassafras? I didn't sassafras. get the invite. You seen right, Chef Games? It's triple date, right? Triple date? Be a seventh wheel ordeal. <laughs> dude. I'm not allowed to have friends that aren't me. Now you're yelling at me and you're protective? Guys, All right, see, there's, there's the one. beauty of that weight. Alex's gonna clip it off. Good. Yeah, he's floating now, look at him. Yeah, yeah he's back there. Woo, oh, nice. oh yeah, he's blown up. Oh, he's still Dude, shaking he's still out some life in him though, huh? Right into the net. Hell yeah. When I say blown up, I mean eyeballs. You see how his body's kind of just it almost looks like someone stuffed him with gas, and that's exactly what happened. He's coming up, 
There's a lot more pressure in 300 feet than there is up here. So he can't compensate for that change. So his gases expand, his eyeballs fly out of his head. You getting bit, Ryan? Yeah, it's a bite. Oh, we got another bite behind the camera. That's on that gun, that's gonna be a big one. You could set it down. Get set, get set, get set. Okay, you got it. Yep. That's a big one. Oh yeah, one. he's pulling. Take it easy on it. While I was filming for Vic, literally the last rod out behind me got hit. Picked it up, got tight with it on a big, big dead bait. Wait, right here, Ryan. Yeah. Nice spot. Yeah. Oh yeah. Got him on. You ready? He's a keeper. Nice. Hell yeah. Another in the boat. Get that hook on him. <laughs> Good in the nostril, huh? <laughs> right. All right, guys. That is our third mutton. Ryan just pulled up. Yeah. Yes, and, sir. And uh, being the nature of my business, I get to fish with a lot of captains, and captain gets paid for the hunt, not the kill. The experience and the brotherhood you have out here is way more important than what comes at home in the fish box. Don't get me wrong, I like bringing home fish home in the fish box, but uh, just being out here with someone who's super positive like Ryan, well worth it. So if you guys want to book a trip with him, linked in the description box below. All good, brother, all good. Good karma, yeah, right? We have good karma sport fishing. Holy B-roll. <laughs> <laughs> My guess is a 18 inch mud. Yeah, I'm guessing a little mud. It's a porky! Oh, yes! Whoa! Dude, I'm telling you, I'm way more excited to see this thing come aboard. Flip him? Flip Ooh, or die. Oh, buddy! <laughs> That's a stud. Yes, it is. That's my biggest porky okay, by see, far. Okay, see, listen. The excitement on your face between this fish versus the mutton you caught, you can't. It's, you can't be matched. <laughs> Everyone wants to catch a porky. We're gonna make porkies great. Listen, the so camera magic that's going on right here, look at this. Me and him got look at this. Uh, look at how cases. big this party yeah. can look yeah. with a yeah. little yeah. photo yeah. magic. It's, it's amazing what a fish yeah. island can do, but nice job, dude. Long arm nation right yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. He looks like he's 40 <laughs> pounds right here. <laughs> very it's similar like a sheep's to like, head. Yes, very similar to sheep's head. Big crustacean, barnacle eater. He's still got his wisdom teeth, Victor. <laughs> That's a very good looking box. We got the pink snapper, the white snapper. If you were in the Bahamas, they would call that a white snapper, a gray snapper. Everything over there is a snapper. So we were about to reel up everything. And of course, as soon as Alec touches the rod, this rod starts to double over. He had a fish just kind of sleeping on it and it's actually pulling pretty good. It's immovable object right now. Nice. Wow. Oh, oh yeah. wait. Deep water nurse. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. That's Yo, not no. dude. Whoa. He was definitely sleeping on it. He found himself a little cozy yeah. rock, yeah. sat underneath there with your bait. Okay, well, that's all you guys needed to see about that. Yeah, I don't know. I'm still not convinced. Ryan says I have a fish on. I think it might just be, oh no, that's a that's fish. That's a fish. That's a fish. <laughs> <laughs> that weight, man, I need to buy one of those weights. <laughs> what I could do is if I buy a weight that moves, like on a slow day, I could put that weight down on there and <laughs> we can act like there's all nothing. All the clients will be fired up. Everybody will be all fired up. It's not that fish, Vic. No, it's not. Fish. It was uh, while I was reeling up, so who knows. Ryan said, you want to go catch more corgis? Heck yeah, we do. So we're going to go Big. to another. Big, big porgy, porgy guy. guy. Well, I'm nearing the home stretch here. And yes, Ryan, my face would be ecstatic if it was a porgy. And it is a mutton. mutton. Oh, is there, is there something? No, it's a plume of uh, bubbles. A plume. Oh, I got a nice fish. Oh, you had Woo, one. Oh. Buddy. I don't know if this fish was on the whole time or um, he just got a little frisky when he saw me reeling up that pilchard, but definitely beautiful mutton. Crazy to think that these things live out here in 300 feet of water, but they'll also cruise the flats in like six feet of water. Just such a versatile fish. And that is a porgy, it's over 10 pounds. This is a big yeah. fish, whatever it is. What do we got? How's that for a heck of a snapper right there? Just a toad mutton. That's my biggest ever, actually. They get probably twice this size legitimately, but 10 pound fish, this is something that I would just love to catch every single time I come offshore. Look how I mean, we were talking about the different colors and everything like this. This is your typical colored reef mutton, not orange like the one earlier this morning, but just a gorgeous fish, delicious fish, and something that, you know, we're super excited to catch and very appreciative of, uh, you know, very appreciative of him. So Vic's definitely going to cook this thing up into something delicious, I'm sure. Oh, oh on camera, dude. Got him. Get him. Get him. Get him. Get him. He's on. Oh, yeah, he's there. He was. Get tight on him. Okay, get the slack back on him. 
Feel him? Oh my god. Oh my nice gosh. Oh, you got him? No, he's off. Alright, well that's why you book a trip with Ryan and you listen, <laughs> you listen to everything he says because clearly I have no idea what I'm talking about. Good friend of mine, great captain, and uh, he's going to put you guys on the fish. Snapper, grouper, whatever's running. Don't request it. Let him, he's the captain. He knows what he's doing, so. Conditions are right. I'll put you on the best possible bite I can do it. And this is not his boat. Um, we fished on two different boats with him. This is actually his friend's boat, so I don't want any fal false advertising. But if you guys are interested in a trip with him, like I said, in the description box below, I will catch you guys at the filet table. Okay, well, what I said earlier was fake news. I will catch you at the filet table, but we actually still have a fish on. Yeah, it's a nice this, one. This fish, That's I nice kept whining one. on him and, um, I guess he just swam towards us. You got to think we have so much leader. We got a ton of lead. Plus, you're in 300 feet of water, so you probably have like 400 feet of line out. Yeah, that's a good one. Just woke up on Dang, man. We'll take what we can get. That's a nice fish. Oh, he's gone. Shucks. That Is it one, actually gone? That, that, that time's one's actually gone. Yeah. yeah ah. he, was, he was on there a little too long. <laughs> <laughs> Time to fillet up Mr. Mutton Snapper. Now, this is a pretty cool new knife that uh, Dexter has come out with. You guys are gonna see it in a couple months. I know a lot of people struggle with scaly fish, sheep's head, mutton snapper, grouper, because they got scales. Well, Dexter's got this cool new knife. It's coming out in the spring that actually has a serrated edge on this side. So if you guys struggle with that, or struggle getting through bones, this will be a game changer for you. And the nice thing is, you got your regular blade on this side. So get through the scaly side, then you get through the nice soft flesh. Kirk and I were just talking, it's been quite a while since we've been on film, and also since uh, a mutton snapper has been at this filet table. Beautiful. Mutton snapper. No better fish. I know it's Brooks Dad's favorite. I know it's probably Brooks favorite. It's definitely one of my favorites. Firm, yet flaky fish. And fun as heck to catch too. Especially in that deep water. Look at that. Gorgeous. I'll see you guys at dinner. All right, so we got our mutton snapper and porgy. And I want you guys to take a look. You guys saw I was a little hyped up about the porgy on the boat, and there's a reason why. Look at this, this is everyone's preferred fish, right? The porgy never gets any love, man. Look at this. That reminds me of hogfish. Very white and flaky. Absolutely gorgeous. So this is one mutton and one porgy. We're gonna season it up now, and we're gonna go outside and do a little backyard cooking. Paprika garlic powder, salt, and pepper. Okay, same thing on the other side. Now the reason people like snapper so much is because this is exactly one week old fish that has been in the fridge. You can't do this with a lot of fish. Fish, unlike other proteins like chicken or beef, they don't have as long as a, of a shelf life. They get, um, they get fishy, you know? They get a, a foul taste, very desirable fish. They don't get as fishy as fast. We are cooking in the backyard, gorgeous sunny day in sunny South Florida on the Camp Chef Woodwind. We got the sidekick right here. We got the gas on this side, the pellet grill. I have this preheated to 400 degrees. Got a little Dutch oven casserole pan. We're gonna go in with some olive oil. And that is hot. We're starting out our fish dish. We got some diced onion, yellow, red pepper, going in to the olive oil. I don't know why, but Brooke's not feeling like talking. She goes, should I show everyone my work? And I was like, yeah, do it, babe. And check this out. We got ourselves a nice new flat roof, which is gonna be really good for um, cooking videos. We can actually cook out here and not get baked in the sun. Or um, get rain or get rained on. There's a lot of times where we want to cook fish outside, but it's raining, so this is our backyard. Welcome, welcome. Thank you for having lunch with us and hanging out with us. And um, yeah, 
This is our little deck area and we just got this little flat roof and now we can cook on the grill. Very excited because you guys know how much we love to cook and entertain. I'm gonna add, I'm gonna add just a little bit more olive oil right here. And we're gonna go in with a whole head of garlic. Don't be afraid of garlic. Garlic loves you back. We're gonna just wake up the garlic with the peppers and onions and you guys see those peppers and onions got some great color on them. Now we're gonna deglaze our pan and also use our wine as kind of almost like a poaching liquid. So I'm gonna deglaze it right now, get all those bits off of the bottom of the pan. You ready? We're gonna kill the heat on here. So I'm gonna put my fish right on top of this mixture and that alcohol in that wine is gonna cook out and we're just gonna be left with a delicious and sweet and savory sauce. So this is the pellet grill. Got it set to 400 degrees. And that baby's gonna finish off in there. All right, we're ready to take a little peek. Oh yeah, baby. Look at that. Whoa. This is my favorite part. I'm a sucker for a good French bread or baguette with a bunch of juice to dip in. Look at that. I don't know about you, Brooke, but I am like beyond excited. Holy smokes. You want to talk about fork tender? Mmm. Very good. How about that sauce though? Peppers, onions, garlic, the rich wininess, olive oil. So much, oh, so much flavor going on. I just got a bone. Uh oh. You're in big trouble. I haven't done that in a while. Let me try yours. Be interesting to compare the porgy to the mutton. I got porgy on my plate, Brooke has mutton on hers. Let's see what you think. Which one is better? They're both really good. The porgy is a little bit thicker, a, a little bit of a bigger flake, but both, I mean, you, could, you couldn't tell the difference between the two. When it comes to carbs, I think bread is the best. Bread is the king. Then it's like pasta, then rice, but bread, being from Eastern Europe, oh my gosh, I love bread so much. And this is why I wanted to make this dish. You just make some fish, get a good piece of bread, you got all this stuff to dip in. We got, um, the peppers and the onions and you can just dip into this juice you don't need no butter just delicious caramelized vegetables <clears throat> i didn't get to go on this boys fishing trip but i'm glad that i'm still getting to enjoy the fish because it's really really good holy smokes i want to thank you guys so much for watching captain ryan if you guys want to book a trip with him link below magic spoon cereal don't sleep on that offer i'm going to have them linked below it is delicious i eat it for breakfast i eat it for lunch I even have it for dessert sometimes. It's that good. <laughs> yeah, you did. And it's good for you. So, I'll catch you guys in the next one.